just brought into the state. A real quick background, and then we'll get into some dialogue. We identified uh, a short time ago that Obviously, the construction industry has turned the corner a little bit from the recession, uh, hopefully moving forward. But a part of that is the fact that there needs to be more skilled workers, more entry-level workers coming into the field, into the industry. Uh, and that is going to be a real problem for the industry finding folks, uh, enough workers, to do the construction work that's needed. Coupled with that is the fact that here in the state, of course, we're always looking for job training in all industry sectors. And there are folks who need jobs, uh, need training for specific jobs, whether it's high tech or all the way down to automotive mechanics and in, now in our case, construction uh, folks. And so we invited uh, a, the national organization called Home Builders Institute to apply to the state of New Hampshire for uh, being uh, considered uh, and approved as an authorized trainer uh, for our industry using U.S. Department of Labor funds. Wow. Uh, so a long introduction to the fact that they got approved. Uh, Beth, with many years of experience in the construction industry, uh, was hired as the program manager. She has somebody working for her as uh, the instructor. And so we're going to get into a discussion with Beth uh, this morning on this real important program. We hope folks are listening who might be interested in taking this training, getting into the industry, and perhaps starting a career. Welcome, Beth. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Welcome. This is exciting. I, and this is what I had said to uh, Kendall before we came on the air. This is an exciting, innovative w program, this institute, teaching young people, veterans, whatever, about how to become an apprentice or into the get into the construction industry, which we've, on other shows, Kendall, we've talked, discussed how there's... There's a lack of it right now. Well, we hope to meet uh, needs, uh, again, for both those who need training and careers and the industry that needs training. So, Beth, tell us uh, how it's going. It's just uh, pretty much out of the gate now. Well, it is out of the gate. We started in March with a program that uh, was pretty much non-existent here in New Hampshire, although HBI across the country has done this kind of training for over 30 years, mostly in the South and in the Southwest. So through the leadership of the Board of Directors for the Home Builders Association and, uh, and also Kendall Buck, um, HBI was contacted and a survey was done with our membership and the membership said, yes, we really do need people. In New Hampshire, as well as across the country during the recession, many people got out of the business. And um, traditionally, the way that folks get into this business is at the knee or at the elbow of a mentor, someone who hires them to come onto the job site, um, starts them in the heavy equipment business, which is usually moving a wheelbarrow around with cement in it or um, doing runs or uh, offloading materials uh, from pickup trucks or other delivery um, apparatus. And uh, you start at the bottom. That's how I started uh, painting foundations and digging holes and doing all of those kinds of things. And then through the learning by doing, um, folks work their way up to uh, um, being, uh, in some cases, master craftsmen if they have the, uh, the ability to do that. So during the recession, many people uh, got out of the business and there was also no work going on. And so the usual suspects that would come in and get involved in the business didn't have that opportunity. HBI brings in a boot camp approach to um, training. Uh, the class runs 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, we go through 13 to 15 disciplines, and the individuals get um, an exposure to all of the aspects involved in the construction field. Wow. Now, the students come out, those who uh, finish the program, with a certificate. Is that correct? Tell us they what do. that is. They do. There's actually um, three certifications. Um, many folks may know the dangers of uh, work that's done with regards to lead paint. Um, there's a whole uh, plethora of problems with regards to improper uh, removal of um, materials that have uh, lead paint on them. And so the individuals that take the class will be certified uh, with their lead paint certification. So they'll know how to handle that product 
uh, directly. We also have what's called an OSHA 10. OSHA 10 is a 10-hour class that an individual goes through, um, and it talks about all aspects of safety uh, with regards to the construction site, whether you are uh, learning how to properly uh, move around ladders so that you don't hit over wi overhead wires, or whether you're just learning about scaffolding or safety straps or just general safety issues. And so they'll have that certification. That makes them very valuable out in the field uh, because the individual that's hiring them recognizes that they know um, the things that they need to, to do to make the job site safe and make themselves safe as well as the other workers on the job site. And then the third certification comes from the National Association of Home Builders through the HBI program. And that basically tells a potential employer that this individual has been through a curriculum that they've been tested out on, both from a hands-on standpoint and also a written standpoint, so that they understand various aspects of the construction field. And again, that is a, a tool that um, uh, a potential employer can rely on and also gives this individual that up until this point may be unemployed or underemployed um, some real credentialing. Um, the work is, uh, again, runs 10 to 12 weeks. Individuals can test out earlier uh, if they show a proficiency. 75% um, of the work is hands-on, and 25% of the work is um, actual lecture and theory. So the students that come out of this program really have a good understanding about all the various tools and um, how to frame a wall, how to sheetrock, how to plumb, how to plaster, all of those aspects. They may not be experts in those things, um, but they certainly can understand uh, the, the concepts behind it and have done um, different pieces of it. So now, is that the progression of certification? You, go, you start with the uh, learning about mold remediation, lead paint, that kind of stuff. Then you go to step two of the certification, which is no, the OSHA. No, it's all concurrently. Um, oh. Every every day we talk about safety. Every day we talk about um, uh, different aspects of it. When you're on a construction site, there's many, many parts that are happening all the time. So it isn't uh, necessarily a progressive um, uh, exposure or experience. Um, all of these things are happening. Cool. And explain, Beth, a little bit about uh, the aspects of the training that teaches it uh, or treats it just as if they are coming to a job. The employability skills, the be on time, dress properly. Oh, abso absolutely. Um, a good portion of what it is that we do and what I do um, is actually working with these individuals. Again, they may be coming from an underemployed or unemployed situation. They may be young um, and uh, they really don't know what is expected out in the workforce. And so we spend a lot of time talking about employability. Um, the idea that you when you show up, you need to have your tools with you. You need to have your, your work boots on. You need to be prompt. Um, you need to be dependable, uh, ready to go to work. And so we spend time doing that. We also spend time helping these individuals put together a resume. Um, everybody has life skills. And maybe at eight, you helped your grandfather on a farm. Um, well, for a, a potential employer in the construction field, that experience that you had as a young child or up until you your teens or whatever age you are um, is something that can be uh, marketed and so we work with these individuals to uh, put that resume together we also work with them to get um, proper references um, and again through the um, training program the uh, gentleman who is the trainer uh, a gentleman by the name of Larry Cutting out of the Pentecook Concord area, uh, has years and years and years of experience, and so um, it's his responsibility, as mine as well, to make sure that these uh, individuals are proficient in the different categories. Wow. What does it cost for the student? Well, it doesn't cost anything. You have to be income eligible. Stop it. Yes. Um, this is a grant through the Department of Labor, and uh, there are income eligibility uh, requirements, um, which basically you need to be underemployed or unemployed. Uh, and so it's an incredible opportunity for uh, an individual that doesn't have the money to maybe go to trade school, isn't ready for college, uh, and maybe needs to sharpen their skills so that they can become employable. Is there an age requirement? I mean, you can't be 12, but you have to be 18? You have to, to be start? at least 18 years and older. This is called the PAC program, pre-apprenticeship program. Uh, program for adults. So 18 years and older. Um, traditionally across the country, it's between 18 and...
they get involved in, in, in the Institute? Well, it's fairly easy. They can contact the um, home builders in Concord, New Hampshire, state office at 228-0351, or they can call me directly on my cell at 296-5272, or email me at E-F-I-S-C-H-E-R at hbi.org. And we go through a process and that an individual will contact us, tell us that they're interested in being involved in the program. There is an application. I can email it to you. We can fax it to you. We can mail it to you. Or you can pick it up. Um, and it basically asks a series of questions. And from that, um, we encourage you also to take a look at the HBI website, uh, which explains all of the different components of the uh, uh, training program. And then we sit down and we have a, a brief interview, uh, making sure that the individual understands uh, what the commitment is, because the classes run in Concord, which will actually start next um, Monday. They run from 8 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. And that allows individuals who maybe work second shift uh, or can go off to work at that particular point in time. And so uh, we need to make sure that the applicants that are coming to take the class, because there's only 10 slots available each time we offer the class. Ah, for um, 12 weeks, correct? For 10 or 12 weeks, unless they test out earlier, um, that they're serious about this. We try and operate it uh, very close to what a normal work schedule would be. Uh, but I will tell you that once you're in the construction field, you won't be getting off at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. No 9 to 5, no. huh? <laughs> no, no, no. More like a, like a 7 till it's done Ooh. kind of thing. Um, but there's an opportunity for you to um, make a lot of money uh, working in the construction field if you're not afraid to put your uh, uh, effort in. Now, this is, excuse me, Kendall, this is strictly for New Hampshire residents, correct? It is. It runs across the country, and there are other HBI programs. And so if any of your listeners are thinking about this for someone that they know in another part of the country, they can go on to the website of hbi.org and um, check out where these uh, programs are being offered in other parts awesome. of the country. Awesome. Or they can give me a call again at the Home Builders Association. So, Kendall, how long, and Beth, how long, is this inaugural right now, um, or it's been going on? Well, this is brand new here in New Hampshire. Again, several months of ramp up, and as Beth said, the first class is starting next week. Uh, and it's what's called uh, 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 rolling entry skilled exit. And so people really can join most at any time during the class is generally is what we're looking for. But my question, Beth, is, okay, it's in Concord now. Do you have any plans for moving the program around the state? Somebody might be in Nashua and say, I'd love to take that. I would have difficulty getting up to Concord for daily classes. What the plan? What future plans for that? We do have the plans to uh, move it around the state. We wanted to get our feet wet in Concord. That's where the home builders um, uh, has their base. Um, but if you're familiar with the Home Builders Association, there are several locals across the state. Manchester right. Nashua is actually one of the sponsors of this program, and so there's an interest on the part of the members of the New Hampshire Home Builders Association to bring the program to their individual locals. And so we're in early conversations about where our next move is. Um, we know that there's a big need for it down in the Nashua area, and I've spoken to the folks at the high school um, who were involved in this, the training program there, the skills training program there. So we will be in Nashua. I don't have a date specific. We're also going to be up in the Lakes region, and um, I'm from the Seacoast, and so uh, I'd like to see it come over into the Seacoast as well. Cool. And then um, because the classes run 10 to 12 weeks, we basically we'll run four programs over the next year starting in Concord uh, and then move it about the state so so is it also is is it in house training um, school uh, classroom type of training and hands-on training? Oh, absolutely. We have what we call the lab, and that's actually um, being housed uh, this for this session at one of our members in Concord, uh, New Hampshire, a gentleman by the name of Dick Benson, Bricks and oh, Sticks. Bricks and um, Sticks. Yep. We know Dick. And so uh, uh, Dick is housing the first one, and we have about 1,000 square feet there that we're using for both classroom as well as lab. Um, mm -hmm. And the hands-on will actually happen at that site as well. In addition, we work and uh, with non 
nonprofits, and the students will actually go to different sites across the state, uh, depending on where the class is being held in the Concord area. And then when we're down in Nashua, we'll work with local nonprofits and come in and do small projects. So maybe they have a bathroom renovation, or maybe they have a, uh, a ramp that needs to be built. Or in the case of if it's a conservation area, maybe they need to have some, some uh, bridges built across some, you know, little streams and wetlands. And so this gives the students an opportunity to have some in the field experience, um, problem solving, uh, change of terrain. And so it isn't constantly just, you know, a, a perfect lab environment because when you're in the construction business, right. there's Nothing's a lot perfect. of moving targets here and nothing is square. And, and so this gives the students the opportunity to actually have some hands on and interact. And it also helps the nonprofits in the community, which is awesome. Yes, it is. There's a lot of uh, moving parts to this program and, and a lot of yet-to-be-determined uh, benefits, we think, in terms of partnering and networking and so forth. I, there's a lot, of, a lot of ways we can move this forward. Beth, you mentioned a moment ago about working with and contacting the local schools, the, the technical high schools, trade schools. What other groups uh, are you uh, talking with and uh, discussing uh, potential students that they might be able to recommend? I mean, we need to attract students, Glennis, right. to the program because it's continually going on. Uh, we're here on the radio. This is one way. We have advertising in our Granite State Builder magazine. And so what other groups uh, might be interested in saying, hey, we might have some students that would be eligible and interested in this? Even though this is a new program in New Hampshire, we have the benefit of 30 years of experience by HBI across the country. And so I've relied on the colleagues that are across the country that uh, work with um, this program. And uh, one of the populations that uh, we work Work to attract our veterans, individuals that maybe got out of um, high school, joined the service, did a two-year stint, um, and they've come back now, and they uh, have a whole lot of life experience. They may be pretty proficient in uh, working on Humvees and and uh, the kinds of military type things, but may not have the skill set that they need to be able to transition back into the normal um, workforce. And so, um, across the country, veterans are often often um, beneficiaries of this oh, kind of program. I love and it. so we're working with New Hampshire National Guard uh, to reach out to that population and uh, excited about bringing those uh, oh. young men and women into the classroom. Which is a thing after my heart. I think mm -hmm. that's awesome to give, yep. you know, veterans... Another population that we work with is actually an immigrant population. Um, I'm a lifelong uh, native of New Hampshire, and um, the uh, populations that have uh, happened, especially in some of the cities, is really changing. And uh, through the good works of many uh, nonprofits, we have a lot of immigrants that have come to uh, New Hampshire and specifically uh, the Manchester, Concord, Nashua area. Um, these individuals uh, often come from very, very difficult situations. And and uh, through the work of the nonprofits, they find uh, initial jobs. But we were discussing about how, what, what the training that is involved, twelve-week program. Why don't we give you, do a little review, Beth, of how people or anybody that's interested who is listening now, how do they get involved with your the, uh, the Home Builders Institute? Well, the easiest thing to do is just give us a call. Uh, my cell phone number is 603-296-5272. And leave a message if I can't pick up your call, or you can email me at efisher at hbi.org. That's the best way. We only have 10 slots for each one of the classes, and so um, it's really easier if you make a personal contact with uh, me as the program manager. You can also contact the New Hampshire Home Builders Association at 228-0351. They're located at 119 Airport Road in Concord, New Hampshire, if you need to stop in. And those folks up there will also know how to reach me if I don't happen to be there in the office. Kendall, they're all going to go to you. That's fine. And uh, again, we'll have this podcast on our uh, Facebook account, uh, New Hampshire Home Builders Association Facebook account, and they can listen to this all over again and get the information. Absolutely. And that's why we do this to get this information out to our listening viewers. We're on the cam. Um, home Builders, is there a website yet? built for specifically New Hampshire uh, Home Builders Institute or 
No, there won't be. Um, the link will always be through the New Hampshire Home Builders Association. And part of that is that the Home Builders Institute is here um, by the graciousness of the New Hampshire Home Builders Association. And there's such a connection between HBI, both on a national level, um, as well as through New Hampshire and the Na National Association of Home Builders. We, want, we recognize who brought us to the party and um, uh, want to connect, continue with that link. Home Builders has a uh, website. They have Facebook. Um, you're Twitter, all over Twitter. the social media, right? Uh, we hope so. Good, mm -hmm. because that a lot of people, especially young, the young, use their Twitter and Facebook to to get connected. So we understand. My age, I'm still trying to figure that out. But <laughs> Me indeed, too. It's, e it's easy to get a hold of us and get a hold of Beth, as she just described. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's primarily on the boots networking that is going to bring students to this program. Uh, by word of mouth, by successes, once the first graduating class is employed, hopefully that will lead to further uh, notices and press releases about the success of the program. It'll just go on from there. For general information about the HBI pre-certification apprenticeship program, the HBI website of www.hbi.org um, under programs has a full uh, explanation of the uh, Good. of the program. What's involved, what they learn, what the requirements are, all of those kinds of things. Can and they get so, the application uh, there no, too? No, they need to contact they us gotta directly. Go to, they it's New Hampshire specific, Home Builders. Yes. That's gotcha. right. It's specific in terms of the way it's funded through the state of New Hampshire using right. federal DOL funds. So uh, it, it's quite an intricate process. Uh, but again, we're excited about it, and it, uh, it should should grow. We expect. As time and your on. first class is starting when? It sure is, and our first class is starting a week from uh, a week from today. Wow. We will be up and running. Awesome! Um, and, is uh, it full? We're excited about it. Uh, I've got two slots left. Um, so if you're interested in coming up to the Concord area for this training, uh, please get in contact with us right off, and we will uh, process your application. You can't just show up for the class. There is a process because of the uh, funding through the Department of Labor that we need to work through. So uh, why don't you explain it? what that process is a little bit more? I know you said there was a brief interview, there's an application, mm -hmm. written application, mm -hmm. but there's a little more to it than that. There is more to it than that. You know, we're interested in making sure that the student is very interested in what it is that we're going to be teaching them, and they're committed to that. But then, as any good um, uh, government program has, uh, there's a bit of a bureaucracy that you have to go through, although the folks at the WIAA office in Concord and across the state have been wonderful. Um, once you commit to, yes, you'd like to do this, we will put you in contact of one, with one of the counselors from the WIA office. They are the gatekeepers as far as the funding is concerned. And you'll have an appointment with them. Um, those individuals will ask you to bring some documentation in, proof of residency, birth certificate, um, some information with regards to your employment or lack thereof, um, and some other credentialing. And they check off those items and then make a determination whether you're income eligible. Unfortunately, we've had a few people who have wanted to take this program um, that because they are uh, working uh, full-time or even part-time, but um, they are not income eligible. But we encourage everybody to apply, and then we'll sort that all out. Again, this is for unemployed and underemployed individuals. What is the income qualification? Well, it depends on the county. Um, it depends on the number of people in the household. And so um, it's hard to, to set a specific number if you have, uh, because it looks at the household income. Gotcha. Now, I don't want to finish this uh, segment, Glennis, without putting a specific request out there. And that is, and Beth, you'll help me, we're always on the lookout, or Beth's program is always on the lookout for uh, help with materials, tools, donations to help uh, the classroom and particularly the lab go well. Uh, Larry uh, Cutting, the instructor, needs materials and, and donations of tools gently used. Yes. Explain yeah. what we need. 
Well, um, pretty much anything that would be used in the construction business. I actually am going to go up and uh, and pull a bunch of uh, half sheets of plywood off a job site that uh, I know they're not going to use it. It was going to be leaned up against the, the telephone pole for the neighbors to take, and so we'll take those. Um, many of the New Hampshire Home Builders Association members have been very, very generous. Uh, Warehouser is one of our members. Uh, Granite Group is one of our members, and they are working with us to provide the various materials that we need, not only for the work that's done in the lab, but as we go out to the community projects, uh, whether we're building a ramp or we're building, uh, redoing a bathroom or some other aspect of it. And so we're looking for more and more uh, donations like that. In addition, I didn't mention that the graduates actually leave the class with a toolbox. Aww. And so they have uh, pretty much all of the tools that they're going to need as a laborer um, when they go out into the in, into the workforce, and that's really um, important in in our industry. Uh, if you don't have the tools. You know.